Hey, can you tell me what will happen if I push this big ball into this tub full of water? The water pushes the ball back up, right? Now we already know that water has this ability to push anything kept in it upwards. But despite this upward push, some things like this tiny raisin sink in water. But how about instead we drop some raisins in carbonated water, in, in soda and see what happens. Look, the raisins are dancing. But do you know why raisins dance in carbonated water? To investigate this mystery of dancing raisins, let's first recall how we decide whether something sinks in water or not. We will further inquire what is special about carbonated water or soda, which makes the raisins sometimes sink and sometimes rise in the water and sink again and rise yet again as well. Now we already know that anything kept in water is pushed upwards by a force called the buoyant force. This is the same force that keeps large ships afloat on water. Why does the raisin sink in water then? Well, because buoyant force is not the only force acting on it. The force of gravity pulls the raisin downwards. So sinking versus rising is a fight between upward buoyant force and the downward force of gravity. When gravity wins, the raisin sinks. On the other hand, when the buoyant force wins, the raisin rises upwards. We already know that more the weight of an object, more is the force of gravity. So heavier an object is, more would be the downward force. But the raisin is not gaining or losing any weight during its dance. The weight remains the same. So the pull of gravity remains identical throughout the dance of the raisins. This means that when the raisin falls, the buoyant force must be weaker than gravity. Similarly, when the raisin rises, the buoyant force must be stronger than gravity. So, what decides how much buoyant force would act on this raisin? Okay, instead of giving you the answer, how about I show you a small experiment. Let's take two bottles and I have put some blue sand in them. I put different amounts of sand to ensure that the final weights of the two bottles are equal. And there you go. Notice that the two bottles are now weighing the same. But clearly one bottle is larger in size than the other one. Now let's try pushing them in water. When these two bottles are pushed in water, the weighing machine attached to the larger bottle starts giving a lower reading. Think and tell me why you think that would happen. Yes, the reading on this spring balance is actually the weight of the bottle plus the sand minus the upward buoyant force. Now greater is the decrease in the value of the reading, the greater is the buoyant force. And as you just saw from the change in the reading, the object with the greater volume experiences a larger buoyant force by water. Coming back to our raisin, therefore we can say that the buoyant force can increase when the volume of the raisin is more and it can decrease when the volume of the raisin is less. And let me remind you that this change in the buoyant force was happening only in the carbonated water or the soda. It was only in the carbonated water that the raisins were rising and falling again and again, right? So what is there in the carbonated water that is increasing the size of the raisin but not increasing its weight? Let's think. It must be something that occupies space but has very little weight. Gas, yes. The carbon dioxide present in the carbonated drink. The gas bubbles in a carbonated drink are attracted to the rough surface of the raisins. When these bubbles attach to the raisin, 
they increase its volume substantially while keeping the weight almost the same. Therefore, the bubbles in the carbonated drink or the soda act like floating devices and increase the buoyant force on the raisins. As the buoyant force becomes stronger than the weight, it wins and the raisin rises up. But what happens that makes it fall back again? You guessed it right. When the bubbles come to the surface, they burst and the gas escapes in the air. With a decrease in volume, the buoyant force becomes weaker than the force of gravity. As gravity wins, the raisins sink. This rise and fall continues till there are enough bubbles in the drink which keep attaching to the raisins again and again. Now you know why raisins dance in carbonated water and also what gases can do to your ability to float. I'm sure now you can scientifically appreciate what would happen if you were relaxing in a swimming pool with your floaties and someone deflated them. <laughs> Comment below and let us know. And for more such engaging learning videos, subscribe to our channel.